Multiple new areas to watch in the Atlantic as we go throughout the next week. Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice, giving you what you need to know right now to plan out your week. And yes, there are three areas that are beginning to get a little bit more concerning, including this wave that is now highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. The America model, the European model, both grow this into a hurricane. The GFS, a little closer to home right here, as you can see, gets really close to the northeast and then possibly a threat toward Nova Scotia. The European and the Canadian each offering some different model runs as well. And then there's a sneaky area in the Gulf that we need to pay attention to in the coming days. If you're new to this channel, please consider liking this video. I love seeing where you're watching from all across the world, whether it be from the Caribbean islands to uh, here stateside. We've got a lot to watch. So turn on notifications, subscribe to this channel, and I'll keep you posted on all things that's going on. Some in the Southeast feeling a little bit more like fall this morning is we've got this overrunning bunch of rain for Florida uh, to Georgia. Uh, in fact, there's a flood risk in many areas today across the southeast as this overrunning rain begins to settle in. So if you're not seeing rain right now in the western Carolinas, maybe a little bit of drizzle, you're waking up to cool temperatures. But rain's going to overspread later tonight, and it looks like this pattern continues into Monday and Tuesday as well, with some areas here across the Carolinas and Georgia feeling like 30 degrees below where they should be this morning. Here's where we woke up to this morning. Still hot across Florida, but as we've mentioned, uh, summer is locked and loaded across Florida, but the Carolinas waking up to October-like temperatures. You see these blues? Those are 50s, and if I look in closer, these darker blues, these deeper blues, are upper 40s. Mount Mitchell woke up to 48 degrees today. Can you believe that? Mount Pisgah, same story. Beach Mountain, Sugar Mountain, those higher elevations in the mountains waking up to some cool readings. Now, as we move forward here, we're watching this front that's to the south. It is providing for overrunning. Basically, that that rain is going over top some cooler, more cloudy weather, and that's going to linger into parts of our Monday, Monday night, Tuesday, this pattern is locked in, and this corridor here across the I-85, basically Atlanta northbound into North Georgia could have some flooding. And for the panhandle of Florida, you're going to be seeing some rain and possibly some storms just training right in here. So flooding does become a concern in this area, and you see it highlighted here right along that front is where the majority of that could be. Uh, also, uh, localized severe weather is possible, but flooding migrating around this pattern and this boundary is my main concern. You can see here from the excessive rainfall outlook from the Weather Prediction Center. Uh, you've got this area here across uh, the Panhandle of Florida through South Georgia up through Charleston and Savannah that have a level two medium risk for flooding. So we'll have to watch out for that locally this week as temperatures are going to be running way below where they should be this time of the year. And I'll be running some of those highs and lows for you today. You'll see 76 in areas like Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. Wait till you see Mount Mitchell and some of those higher elevations. The highs and the lows are just way below normal. Let's talk about the tropics because uh, it, it just really grew in, in activity as we have been warning you about. If you're watching right now, please let me know in the comment section where in the islands. I've seen so many of you from Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Grenada, uh, St. Lucia, St. Martin watching right now. Uh, I, I've seen Nova Scotia in here. I've seen Maine. We've got to stay dialed in anywhere across the East Coast through the next 10 days, according to both of our reliable computer models. Uh, there is going to be probably a named storm, which will likely be Dexter forming right here off the Carolina coast. That front that is cooling so many down across the the southeast from North Carolina to South Carolina to Georgia, you know, that front is kind of a breeding ground for what's happening here, but I also would not be surprised to get a little hatched area here across the Gulf too, because that front is not going anywhere. And that could become the focus for additional development this week, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and who that may impact in parts of Florida. And then you go out here, there's a broad area. If something forms up in here, it's all about latitude. If it forms up here, it's likely to curve out. If it forms toward the southern area here, there's a chance that it gets a little bit closer to the Bahamas or the southeastern United States. Let's show you what's happening right now with a couple of our different systems. This low pressure right here off the Carolina coast is beginning to get a little bit more organized. And it, it's one of those what I call fish names other than turning up the rip currents. Now, these have a history of sometimes being a little bit too close to the United States, and if they are, they can provide for flooding rains, but this one's far enough away 
that it's likely just giving some extra rip currents. Look at Beach Mountain 54 tonight. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> How wild is that? Uh, some of those higher elevations in the upper 40s yet again. Uh, but anyway, this thing is moving away from the United States. So no threat really other than, than rip currents and for some shipping lane disruptions. But that will likely get a name. Then you've got this wave back here that we need to watch. So closer in, this is part of that front. You can trace out that front right here. But it doesn't just stop there. That front goes into the Gulf as well. And look at this bubble up of moisture. I'm not saying that there's going to be a tropical system form, but we need to be dialed in on it, especially for the uh, Gulf Coast of Florida. We need to watch this because it could cause some for some extra flooding concerns this week, depending on where a lower pressure forms. And by the way, most of our computer models do show a lower pressure forming in this area. Deeper out into the Atlantic, you can see we're going to be watching the beginnings of this wave right here. So let's kind of dive into the models. Here's the track for that area off the Carolina coast. There's Bermuda for perspective. It's going out. It's not really going to impact anybody. But the models do show it becoming a tropical storm later today, if not Monday. Possibly even becoming a Cat 1 hurricane, according to the ship's model. But probably just tropical storm Dexter, and we'll knock off the letter D on our hurricane list. So here is a look at the European model. I want to flip it back to the last full run of it. You can see that lower pressure indicated there. Now, a couple areas I want you to pay attention to, and we'll dive into each of them. The Gulf and then this wave, all right? So let's expand out the European. Yeah, you'll probably get a little name here, all right? So again, no big threat there. That's pulling away. Let's look at the lower pressure that's forming out here toward the islands and where and if something happens. The latest European curves this bad boy way before Bermuda. So no threat to Bermuda or the United States or the islands, but you probably get a deep hurricane in here. So that European model curves it out right there. Let's flip it back to yesterday's run of the model. You got lower pressure here closer to the island. So we need to watch where this forms and where it goes. Uh, according to the European, we got a little something something here toward the middle of the month. That was yesterday's full run. This morning's full run has lower pressure out there. And I want you to see the Gulf. So while we have our eyes on this system that's not going to impact anybody, there's some lower pressure trying to form here on the southern end of that front right there. So again, does something lower pressure form here and send extra rain into central Florida, ben, big, big Bend region of Florida, Panhandle up through Destin, Panama City? It's possible. We'll have to watch that. We've seen sneakier things happen this year. I want to show you the European ensemble runs. Well, first of all, here's the wind speeds with that. Uh, just to show you, at, at this point, we're looking for pattern recognition does the European and the GFS show something? And yes, they do. Look at Mount Mitchell tonight, 47. Probably even a little cooler than last night. Okay. Uh, this shows a hurricane. The reds, the deeper reds here, 100 plus mile per hour winds. So we, we've got a hurricane on the European. We just have it way out to sea. No threat. Let's dive a little bit deeper. This is the ensembles. Basically, we're opening up the hood here. Think about the ensembles uh, as 51 different versions of that model, but tweaked a little bit. Higher wind speeds, different location, higher moisture. That way you you look at all different kind of variations and what could form and what, what may not form. Let's flip it back to the last full run of this. You're not looking at multiple different storms. You're looking at different variations of the same storm. So we've got this thing moving away from the United States. Um, it's gone. Then we turn our attention to another cluster down here. That's that wave that's highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. And by the way, the ensemble showing a few lower pressures here toward the end of this week for the Gulf, but nothing crazy. Just want us to stay dialed in on it. So European ensembles got a couple of, of 991, 992s here. And then as we go deeper into uh, August here, this would be next Tuesday, the 12th. It's got a couple of areas getting closer to the Bahamas. This one shows a hurricane. This one shows some action getting close to Florida. Now, these are not individual storms, but rather different variations of where the storm is. So this European run shows it here, while the other European shows a major hurricane closer to Bermuda. Either way, the models are showing something. Something is there from those waves or that wave back toward the Cape Verde Islands that's being highlighted now. So there's some action showing up in the models here toward uh, the next 10 days. So, so basically like I do when I'm, when I'm winter weather forecasting, we're looking at patterns. What are the models showing for Florida? What are the models showing for the Atlantic? And do they agree? Okay, now we have a pattern. So what we have here in the models out of the past five days in a row is 
all the computer models showing there's activity blossoming in that that next 10 days. So the first 10 days of August through the 13th, basically. There's some action that, that is forming. Some are closer to the United States, some are not. So that that's all I would expect out of our computer models at this distance. Now, when we get closer, it's okay. What region will this impact? What country could this impact? All right. At this point, we're just looking at, is there even anything to track? And in this case, our models do show, yes, there is. So the GFS model you're seeing here, shows two low pressures. I want you to pay attention to that. GFS does show for the Gulf a lower pressure forming, which could impact some extra rain for Florida's Gulf Coast. I don't think it's anything big, but I do want you to know that you know weirder things have happened there. Then this system's pulling away in the southeast, and then we turn our attention to some lower pressure here in the Atlantic. GFS model shows a little something here toward the middle of the month, 9th, 10th, 11th. And then we got a long track, something to watch here. And this shows a bigger system going toward uh, the southeast coast here. The Outer Banks, uh, closer to the United States. And this is a big, deep hurricane, according to it. And it's a long track. Folks, we would have <laughs> 10, 12 days to track this as we move forward here. Hey, Libby. Say it to my friends. Will you go back to Parker and watch your movie, please? All right. My daughter's saying hello. You want to say hello to my friends? Okay, here we go. Say hi. All right. Go back to Parker. Hey, Parker, can you come get Livy and y'all play for a minute? <laughs> okay. All right. We'll see you in just a second. All right. So watching this lower pressure here, the GFS model, at least the 6Z, does show it getting a little closer to the United States. Let's back this up. One more model run here. And I want to show you it is forming right there. You got this lower pressure forming going away from the United States. Then we turn our attention toward the islands. Does something get closer to the islands? Lower pressure, but we've got to watch it. Here we are, 1,000, 4,000, 2, something getting closer to South Carolina on this model run. So again, there's a pattern here that shows activities getting closer to the Southeast. That's all that we can say. Watch your sources this time of the year, folks, because a lot of people will say, hurricanes heading to the southeast. No, that's not what the models are showing. They're saying, hey, we need to watch it. There could be something heading in. Let me show you for perspective the wind speeds on this. It's well north of the islands, but again, we just know there's going to be something for me. We don't exactly know where yet. Okay, anybody that tells you they do, they're wrong. Don't trust them. But we know something toward the end of this week is trying to form. And, and the models here, the GFS, shows possibly a hurricane. So did the European. They just disagree on the location. And this thing really deepens on the GFS model in between the Outer Banks and Bermuda. And it gets really close to the Northeast. I mean, we'll have to watch this. It's been a long time since folks in the Northeast have dealt with a hurricane. We'd have to watch, does this get close to uh, some of our Northeastern states and then up toward Nova Scotia, okay? So all eyes are on this. Uh, and again, just for you folks in the Northeast watching, uh, we would watch for this toward the end of the week into this time next weekend. I mean, we'd have a long time to track it, 10 days or so, but this shows it getting a little frighteningly close uh, and this certainly would churn up the waters here off the northeast coast. How does the, the GFS ensembles look? This is basically, again, looking underneath the hood. Uh, the GFS doesn't have as many variations as the European, but it does have enough. Uh, 28 different runs tweaked a little bit. It shows lower pressure pulling toward the United States. Got a little something off the northeast coast here on next Monday. It's got some other action heading toward Puerto Rico, some of the northern islands right here. All right. The Bahamas getting a little closer. And that's got a little something for Florida. So it shows we need to stay dialed in on it. How about that German model? It has been great at early detection of storms this year. It's got this thing moving away from the United States. Does it curl up something in the Gulf? Not really. It does have higher moisture. So it does send an extra rain to parts of Florida. But does it form into a low pressure? No, but it does send in that moisture stream to parts of Georgia, which is why I think we're highlighted there for possible flooding Monday and Tuesday. So keep an eye on that. All right, now we're looking deeper out. Those two threats, other than lingering moisture across the Carolinas and Georgia, just a rainy week. Uh, we're going to look toward this wave. The icon picks up on a very similar European. Big bad hurricane, but way out to sea. All right, so there's some pattern recognition here. And just to show you what some of those waves could do closer to home, look at all this rain. Now, again, 
it doesn't have to be a named storm system for something to be dangerous. And in this case, you got a little lower pressure here on an old front, sends in higher moisture to the southeast. We could have flooding here across Alabama, Georgia, Western Carolinas, and the Panhandle of Florida here uh, through the end of the week. Because that's days of, of different rain. And different model runs are showing similar scenarios here. The, the Canadian model really goes nuts with the, the rain across South Georgia uh, into low country of South Carolina here. So it, it's, it's really uh, dire that we stay dialed in on that. As far as the European deeper out, you, it shows the southeast socked in with that lower pressure, not a tropical system. It's got that streak of that departing low and tropical system. Uh, and then you got the euro that tracks the system up right here. But the main development region is certainly, certainly getting more active in that area, and it bears watching. So folks, simply put, we've got a lot to track in the coming days, at least three areas to watch. This one's highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. That one actually has a moderate chance of development by the Hurricane Center. And then there's a sneaky area in the Gulf. Folks, I'm gonna show you things that aren't even highlighted just to keep you posted on what's going on. And I'll give you that transparent look through hurricane season so that you know what's ahead. I know as a dad of three, my wife and I are always you know, looking ahead to what's next. We're on the go, we're traveling. Our favorite places are in Florida. We're traveling to Central Florida. We're traveling to the beach. So, you know, when I'm not on air, I'm looking out for for what could impact my family as well. And I want to give you that same uh, information so that you can keep your family safe and make plans. So please, uh, if you're new to this channel and appreciate that no-nonsense, uh, transparent look, and honestly, no hype forecast, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. I will be keeping you posted all the way through hurricane season. And please, I love looking in the comment section where you're watching from right now. Uh, in this next video I'll do tomorrow, I'll be reading your comments and reevaluating where you're watching from. I actually made a map, which I'm going to show tomorrow, at where you folks are watching from, which is fascinating to me. Fascinating. So I'll show that tomorrow. I'll read your comments. I'll read your, your questions. Uh, we'll have a little uh, question answer session. So drop your, drop your information in the comment section. Share this with your family and friends. And if you're watching in an area uh, that's surprising to me, make sure you tell your friends and I'll be uh, reading your conversations uh, throughout the day tomorrow. Folks, that's what you need to know for the week ahead. A lot will change. Just go ahead and expect that. Uh, this is an active time of year. So uh, to stay on top of it, make sure you keep checking back in. Have a good week, everybody.